Market. Ooh, I hate Market. For those of us who just want to get inside the tourist trap that is Stormville Castle, Margit is blocking our path and smashing all the unprepared players over and over and over again. Well, after multiple failed attempts, I feel like I have finally figured out how to handle this ugly, ugly boy, and I am going to pass that knowledge on to you. I'm Jamie Latour, and this is how to kick the ever-loving crap out of Margit the Fell Omen. Oh, this is gonna be satisfying. Now you may have noticed when you began Elden Ring that certain sites of grace were pointing in the direction of Stormville Castle, which is where you'll encounter Margit. Naturally, using video game logic, you'd assume that this is where you need to go right there and then, but that's only half true. As while you do need to go there eventually, you sure as hell don't want to do that too early. Unless you've got a lot of patience and you are a master at dodge rolling, Margit will utterly wipe the floor with underleveled players. To be honest with you, after dying multiple times to Margit, I put him on the back burner with my first character and I ran around the entirety of Limgrave and the Weeping Peninsula instead. This game is so huge that I probably spent about 30 hours just finding new stuff to do in this initial area. By the time I did face Margit, I was strong enough and had enough gear to take him down easily. I did speed things up a bit with my second character, but I was still around level 30, 33, somewhere thereabouts when I did face him. So what I'm saying is, it's probably a good idea to not fight Margit until you've hit at least level 25 and have crammed a few smithing stones into your weapon of choice. Now let's get into the meat of this boss fight. Margit's attacks mostly involve swinging this giant staff at your head in a variety of ways. Sometimes he'll do a smash into the ground or like a thrusting or an uppercut kind of attack. Sometimes he'll follow up his swings with a few swipes from a lightning dagger or he may do this leaping attack that could do some serious damage. It can be hard to get the timing down with his attacks due to the awkward pauses and delays in his combos. You have to be cautious and wait for openings for you to attack and don't rush your dodge rolls or you will get caught. When you're far away from him, he'll typically rush towards you, or he'll start throwing those lightning daggers at you. His first phase isn't too bad, but once you've gotten his health bar down to about 50%, he'll start using his phase 2 attacks. This includes slashing at you with a lightning sword and swinging at you with a giant lightning hammer. Man, he's got a real lightning theme going on here, don't he? He'll also try to smush you with a giant leaping ground pound attack with that same giant lightning hammer. Depending on how you build your character, there are different ways of dealing with Margit. I tend to create melee characters in these games because I like swinging around a big old greatsword. If you keep whacking Margit with your powerful weapons or your quick weapons, like say my trusted and beloved twin blade, then you may be able to break his posture, leaving him open to a critical attack. You can also break his poise by two-handing your weapon and landing some jumping attacks of your own. Margit is also very susceptible to hemorrhage, so if you happen to have weapons on you that do heavy bleed damage, like the Reduva Dagger, that you can make short work of him. If you're good at dodging, then you should be fine. Otherwise, you should bring a shield that has good physical and magical resistances on it. As for magic and ranged attackers, Margit can pose a big problem since he's constantly closing in on you and getting in your face. That's why it's a good idea to summon some spirits for this fight. Something like the Lone Wolf or the Godric Knights can be good, although I'm a big fan of taking Banished Knight Ingvald with me everywhere. This guy right here? This guy rules. You can also summon an NPC named Sorcerer Roger just before you go through that fog wall. He doesn't really do much, and in all honesty, he'll probably die. But he does make for a good distraction, so you can get some sneaky hits in on Margit. And speaking of sneaky hits, there's a specific item that you can use to stun Margit during this battle called the Margit Shackle. This will incapacitate him for roughly three seconds, allowing you to beat the hell out of him for a bit. You could use it twice during this encounter, but only during his first phase. To get it, you need to find patches so you could buy it from him. Lucky for you, I did another video on finding that lovable bald bastard, and you can check that out in the description below. 
Once you beat Margit, you get a pretty nice reward, as he'll drop a talisman pouch, allowing you to equip an additional talisman. So to summarize, level up your character, upgrade your weapons and your spirit ashes before going into the fight, watch out for his awkward timing, use summons if you have to, bring along a bleed weapon or slap some blood grease on your current weapon, and use the shackle if you have it handy. And if all else fails, don't worry, there are plenty of player characters that you can summon around this area that will be happy to help you out for the rune arcs. Follow these steps and you'll survive this fight and you'll finally be able to set foot into Stormville Castle, which is a whole other ordeal that I'm going to cover in another video in the future. Oh boy, that's... that's gonna be something, isn't it? For now, you can check out our extensive coverage of Elden Ring over at thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and get ready to storm that castle. Thank <laughs> you.